Okay, I think we are good. Let me try to fix this real quick. Here we go. I felt like I was getting too much light. It was too bright. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started, and what this week is on is bookings. And so, Paula, I know you were on Alicia's last night, so some might be the same, because I'm going to talk about the bubble sheet, too, because Good. we love the bubble sheet. Um, but if you guys have any questions as we go through, like, please feel free to, to ask, stop me, put it in the chats, whatever works for you guys, because I want you to be confident with your bookings. Um, I know you guys know that in Mary Kay, we say if you're out of bookings, you're out of business and we never want you to be out of business. And so that's kind of why, or what I wanted to, to start with today. So the first thing is going back to like, if you're a brand new consultant, and even if you're not a brand new consultant, you guys, um, is just training your mind to think a certain way about bookings. And one of the things that I loved when I was a brand new consultant that I heard and I've always kind of stuck on to was if you knew that if you called a hundred people, you could get 15 to 20 bookings, would you get on the phone and call a hundred people? Well, yeah, cause you knew for sure, a hundred percent for sure you were going to get those bookings. Would you hop on there to call? Same thing with recruiting. If you knew, if you walked into a room of a hundred people and 10 people wanted to do Mary Kay, you just needed to go find them you would walk into that room like, all right, let's go. Let's find these people. Who is it? And so same thing with the bookings. Like you always want to kind of walk into it, like knowing that, all right, let's do this. Let's, let's um, find these bookings and see who wants to book. So, so have that mindset of like, don't get discouraged by the no's, but know that, okay, if somebody does say no, somebody's still waiting. Um, and that's kind of like the SW, SW, SW. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. And that's so true because sometimes you get a little discouraged when everybody's saying no, but you got to remind yourself that, you know what? Some, sometimes God's just protecting me from what he, somebody maybe he doesn't want me to do business with or, you know, whatever. So it's not always a bad thing to, to get those no's, but always just try to remember and try to remind yourself of, that mindset that like, all right, there's people that want a book. I just have to go out there and find them. So, um, so that's the first thing. And then the other thing is you guys think outside the box. There's so many different ideas, um, around booking and how to get bookings. Um, you know, right now I'm working a lot with, with my fab five. So doing that fab five and booking people virtually for that, you can, book people in person like we've always done. You can do that more and more now. Um, you can book people for to be a face model. That was always a big one when I started. If you're a brand new consultant, you can book people for your 30 faces in 30 days. And even if you're not a brand new consultant, you can still book people for 30 faces in 30 days. Um, so if you need more booking ideas and if, if that's what you feel like you just need something fresh. Sometimes you just need something to get excited about and something fresh. Um, there is the 101 ways to get new bookings. So check that sheet out. I think if you just go on like Pinterest or Google it, it'll be on, on there anywhere. But um, that's really good too, just to give you different ideas, just to kind of think outside the box and maybe something you've never done before that you can kind of like maybe try something new and do something that, that will work. So, um, any questions about bookings right now that I can cover, that I can go over so I can make sure that I, I touch on things that you guys for sure want to know. No? I think my um, thing is just um, understanding, I guess, the culture of booking and how it's changed with social media. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, good question, Kristen. So um, just kind of how it has changed. I don't, I don't want to say it's really changed. It's, it's a little, um, it's pretty much the same. You're just booking them virtually. And really, I think virtually gives you a bigger avenue to reach out to more people. 
Um, because think of how many people you have on your Facebook. Like how many friends do you have on Facebook? Obviously they're there because either they know you or you know them, or you have mutual friends or you met them at one time. Have you facialed them? Have you put the product on all their faces? You know, so those are some kind of questions to ask, like who else could I, could I reach out to? Um, but as far as how it has changed, um, I think it, it obviously just the, the fact that instead of being in person, you're going to do it virtually if they want, if they want to do in person, by all means, go, go ahead and do it in person. Um, but if not, you could definitely do it virtually. And if you, if you guys aren't sure how to do a virtual two weeks ago, I did the, how to hold a session boot camp training. So that one is that recording is available. So you can go back and watch that one. Cause that one talks about how to do a fab five and then how to do the hydro session. Um, and those are both virtual things, virtual events that, that you can hold as well. Um, so good question, Kristen, any more questions about booking? Okay. So we are going to jump in here and I'm going to talk about the bubble sheet because I really liked the bubble sheet. Let me see if I can get this to, to work here. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. So you can see where it says bubble sheet tracking. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I loved the bubble sheet when I was a new consultant and maybe it wasn't even out when I was a new consultant, but going through DIQ and building my business because I felt like it gave me something to focus on and something that it didn't feel like a rejection. Like even if I got a no, it still felt like a win because I got to cross a bubble off. So let me show you, here's the bubble sheet. If you guys aren't familiar with the bubble sheet, it's pretty basic, pretty simple, but you're going to track your bookings. Um, and so when you track your bookings, I think you can see, or actually I know you can see like a real number because sometimes in our head, we tell ourselves, oh my gosh, I feel like I called a hundred people, but how many people did you actually call? Like 10, 15, 20? because sometimes it feels like a lot or it feels like, oh my gosh, I got a hundred no's today. Well, did you really get a hundred no's or does it just feel like you got a hundred no's? And so when you track it and when you write it down, you can actually see like, I don't count, if I don't get a hold of somebody, to me, I don't count that as a no. Like I'm not giving her an X on a circle because I didn't get a hold of her. I know some people get discouraged when they, they call people and they don't answer, but I'm like, Hey, she very well could still say yes. I just haven't even talked to her. Um, so here's how you would track your calls for the appointments. And it tells you up at the top, you can fill in the contact name. If you left a message, you put a slash mark. Um, if you spoke to someone, you can put an X. If it's a booking, which I don't know if you guys can see this because the screen's in the way for me. Um, if you booked the full appointment, then you can fill it all in and color that little bubble in. So this way, if somebody does say no and you get to put an X, if she says no, it still feels like a win because you want to try to fill out this bubble sheet. And this, this was really helpful for me. So if you fill out one sheet a week, so if you just focus on every Monday, you pull out a new bubble sheet, you're going to contact 56 people. And it'll, it'll take you probably, you know, depending on how fast you can call or text, it'll probably take you 30 minutes to an hour to do. Um, if you do two sheets a week, that's 120 people. That'll take you about an hour or two. If you do three sheets a week, that's 168 contacts. That's going to take you two to three hours. So you basically can pick like, how fast do I want to move up in this business? So Paula, for you, I would say being in DIQ, I would go for the three sheets a week. And just try to bust it out and spend two or three hours calling. I mean, really two or three hours to call 168 contacts in a week's time, two or three hours in a week's time is not that long. Like it's not going to take that much time. So depending on how quickly you want to move up in your business or um, how quickly you want to earn a car or how quickly you want to become a sales director, focus on the number of bubble sheets that you do. If you just kind of want to maintain and move at a slower pace, then focus on one a week. 
if you want to really move up quickly, focus on that three sheets a week. Okay. Um, so it, I'm not going to read it all to you, but it gives you instructions on what to do. Um, it does say Facebook bookings only count if it was a personal message. Just putting it on your Facebook doesn't count. So you actually have to reach out to somebody either in a personal message or, um, you know, text them or whatever. But if you do personally message them and you see that they see your message, okay? Because I know a lot of times when you message people on Facebook, your message can go in their other folders. And so I don't count that. I don't count it until I know that they've seen my message. Does that make sense? Because sometimes we can message people and they're not even seeing our message. So I don't want you to count that as like a yes or a no because you didn't even really know if they got your message or not. So um, let's see here. And then this other sheet obviously shows you one sheet a week. You'll be a team leader in six months based on how many contacts you're calling and how many people will say yes. Two sheets a week that you complete each week, a team leader in three months and a free car in six months three sheets completed each week, a team leader in two months, free car in four months, and director in six months. So, and again, when texting, you must get a response to count it as a, an attempt. And the numbers are based upon contacts who are 21 or older, um, who are qualified prospects. So, each sheet should bring you at least 10 bookings. If it's not, if you're doing like two bubble sheets, and you don't have any bookings, then I would contact your sales director and say, all right, let's go over this because I need to change my wording or something because I'm not getting as many bookings as I can. So who can get excited about getting 10 bookings just by filling out one bubble sheet? I know, I know that's super exciting. So pull out that bubble sheet, you guys, print it. I'll post this link so you can have all of these sheets because then at the bottom of this page, it gives you um, examples of booking scripts. So you can book a party, you can book a guest to an event, you can book a tentative booking approach. Um, so there's all kinds of scripts on there as well too. My favorite as a new consultant, I used the, the 30 faces in 30 days. And so, especially to like friends and family that you know, they know that you're selling Mary Kay, but you've never really talked to them before. Um, my favorite was just telling them, hey, like I just started my business and I have a huge goal to facial 30 people in 30 days. Um, just to give me practice, I would love to borrow your face and just let me practice and, and get better and better at what I'm supposed to be doing. That was my favorite. And I felt like people wanted to help. People wanted to be a part of that. And who doesn't want a free facial makeover and get a try product? Like most beauty cosmetic stores, you can't go in there and just be like, yeah, could you go ahead and could you put this foundation on me? And can I try a mascara? And what about your eyeshadows? Could I go ahead and try your eyeshadows too? I mean, most places are going to be like, uh, no, you got to buy them. And then if you don't like them, you're stuck with them. Just put them in that drawer that you put all that other makeup in and that's it. So that is the beauty of Mary Kay is they get, they get to try all this stuff before they buy it. Um, so s pull out a script, use it. If it's working, you guys continue to use it. I don't care if you've been in Mary Kay for three years and you want to do another 30 faces in 30 days, you go ahead and, and do that 30 faces in 30 days. Um, I don't think you're ever too seasoned in this business to pull out those new consultant scripts and, and go back through those. Um, so let's see. And then one of my other favorite booking scripts too was the model portfolio. Do you guys use that one at all? Sometimes. Okay. So the model portfolio, basically what that is, is you're building a portfolio of before and after pictures of people demoing your products. And so I used mine a lot for like when I did brides, those would be the pictures that I would be able to show them, um, just the different looks, but you can also do it for the new products. So this is a great time to do the model portfolio because with all of our new products coming out and those eyeshadows coming out and the new lip glosses that I have on, 
You guys, the colors are amazing. I love them. And these are the new eyeshadow colors. So they're not like too bright, but they're, they're super pretty. So you could say, Hey, I need 30 models, um, face models to demo our new, um, summer collection for me. I'll give you a $10 gift certificate just for being my face model. And all you have to do is try our products and give me your feedback and let me know what you think. So that one's super easy as well too, um, just to gather some face models. So no matter if you are going to use the 30 faces in 30 days script, or if you're going to use the model script, what I want you guys to do is have a list ready of people that you're going to call. So let's say that you want to do one bubble sheet and this week you're going to focus on doing one bubble sheet. I want you to have 56 names ready because if you remember on this sheet, it's 56 contacts. So I want you to have 56 names ready of people you're going to contact. Okay. Cause for me, sometimes that's like the hardest thing is like, Oh my gosh, where's all my referrals? Where's my list of referrals? Like where's the profile cards that had all those on there. So if you just had that list sitting down and ready to go in front of you, it's so much easier to just go through and start contacting those people left and right. Um, so pick out how many sheets you want to do a week, whether you want to do one or two or three, however many you want to do, and then make that list of the names that you're going to contact and then set that time aside where it's uninterrupted. If you have kids and you have to hide in your car and lock your car, I've done that before, been there, done that. Uh, if you're hiding from your husband, go hide in your closet. Just find somewhere quiet that you can go for a half hour to an hour and um, make those booking calls uninterrupted. I know sometimes people like to do um, like the power hour. And so literally they sit down for an hour and it's like phone call, phone call, phone call, phone call, one after the other. Um, and that's good too. So however you have to do it to fill out a bubble sheet for the week, focus on that. Um, okay, any, any questions so far about the bubble sheet or bookings or anything. Okay, I'm gonna try to unshare my screen and I will, like I said, I'll post this link. That way you guys can have the bubble sheet. Where will you post it? What'd you say? Where, where will you post it? Um, in the unleashed area okay. of the group. I'll Thank post you. it in there. That way everybody can, can see it. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, if I could just get this back to seeing everybody without Thank you. my shared screen. Um, do, do, do. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Stop share. Perfect. Okay. So yes, I'll post the, I'll post that link in the Unleashed director group and that, or the Unleashed group. That way you guys can have all of those sheets and print it today. Like when, right when we get off of this zoom, print it right away because I know what happens. You get busy and then you're like, I'll just print it later. And then later comes and tomorrow comes and Friday comes and Saturday comes. And then it's a whole new week. So don't let a week go by. Print it right away. Get your 56 names written down. And you guys, sometimes the easiest thing with bookings is start with your, um, start with your chicken list people first. Because those are the people that are the hardest to call. And if you start with those people, even if they say no, you guys, you feel good about yourself because you did it. So I'm sure, I know I still have, I've been a Mary Kay for almost 13 years and I know I still have people that I haven't facialed that are still on my chicken list. So I know you all have people on your chicken list that you need to call. So write those names down and start with those people. Start with those people first, because even if they say no, you're gonna be proud of yourself, or at least I hope you're proud of yourself for reaching out and asking, because sometimes that's the biggest thing is just asking. And you'll, you'll never know until you ask. And the answer is always no, if you don't ask. So, um, the other thing with booking too is, is be consistent with your follow-up. 
Um, and I know you guys have probably already heard, like, be the butterfly, don't be the mosquito. Um, and I have people ask me all the time, like, well, how do you know, like, when you're being annoying? How do you know when you're attempting to call them too many times? And I always say, just go with your gut instinct. Like, if you feel like it's too many times, it's probably too many times. But if you feel like she's not saying no, I think she just you know, needs me to follow up again, then go ahead and do it. There's no set role of like contact her five times, contact her eight times. They actually say in order to get somebody to um, get a booking or make a sale, you have to contact them eight times before they say yes. Isn't that crazy? Super crazy. But if you think about it, everybody nowadays is being sold something. Like telemarketers are calling all the time. Like everybody's trying to sell something. Everybody's trying to, to, to sell people something. And so it takes eight times and for them to, to say yes. And think about yourself. Like when people don't follow up with you, obviously you're not going to say yes to them. But if people do follow up with you, like if you say, contact me next week and then, you know, I'll, I'll see where I'm at or if I want to buy that. And they follow up with you. You are definitely more likely to purchase whatever they are selling when they do follow up with you. So it betters your chance of getting a yes if you do what you say you're going to do. If that's like, you know, I'll follow up with you next week or, you know, check in with you next week. If you don't do that, they're going to, the, the answer is going to be no. But if you do follow up with them, I think it gives you a better chance of getting a booking and getting a yes. So. Okay, we have like seven minutes. So any other, any other questions about bookings? Well, so can I just share a little something to that? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in professional sales for a long time and I'm actually in my MBA program right now for marketing. So it takes awesome. seven to 10 attempts for anyone to actually see anything. So seven to 10 attempts, like just posting about something online, um, but doing it in like seven to 10 unique ways. So like, here's my skin cream, but here's how I use it on my feet. And here's how my kid uses it on their face. And here's how, you know what I mean? Like all the different ways that it's like just present. Um, because just seeing it the same thing over and over and over is not like, they don't want to see that. They want to see all the different ways it can play in your life. Also, when you sell to like, when you're selling like, or like not selling, but like wanting to reach out to someone, have a breakup. So you have to have a breakup. So like say, Hey, I really want to, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, looking to add, you know, whatever it is, whatever your thing is that, you know, I'm, I'm relaunching my business. I was in Mary Kay for a long time and I'm coming back. So it's, you know, I, I'm have new products and I would love to get your opinion on it. I really value who you are. Um, the second email is, uh, like, Hey, I know how busy life is. Just want to follow up with you again. I'm sure you probably didn't see that, but I just wanted to, I told you I'd follow up. So this is my follow up. Last one is, Hey, you know what? I definitely don't want to be that person that just is you know, bothering you if you're really busy. So I guess, you know, right now is just not a great time. If something changes, let me know. Otherwise I'll follow up with you in two months, but you take it away from them. And most people will respond after you take it away because they don't want it to be taken away. Mm -hmm. So like take it away and then they go, Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. I want to do that. Um, so, I mean, that's just really rough language, but you know, it's just basically like a one's a introduction, one's a casual follow-up and ones that take it away so like I guess you know I'll just follow up in three months and two months whatever that is but the average person does not follow up after their first attempt 80% of people don't do a second attempt so already doing a second attempt of the same thing and just in a, a more you know informal way is already putting you in the 20 per, you know in such a huge percentage of people that actually don't do that and it takes most people at least three attempts to follow up Mm -hmm. before yeah. they actually will engage but taking it away is like that enticement of like wait wait you're not gonna you're, wait you're not gonna message me again because they're so used to people just sending it all the time mm -hmm. that then it is intriguing of like well no I want that don't take that away from me. right right so they call it the breakup okay yeah. yeah that's good it's like we can we we don't want what we can have but what we can't have we want yeah, it's enticing like, yeah yes yeah. And that's yeah. funny you said that about um, just showing it in different ways because have you guys seen the new little brush holder that is coming out that holds all the brushes? Oh my gosh, it's so stinking cute. But I've seen so many people be creative with that. Some people are putting lip glosses in there. Some people put their kids crayons and markers in there. And like, yeah. there's just a ton of different ways that they're advertising this of like, 
look at all these different ways. So when you said that, I was like, oh, that's, that's so smart because I've been seeing that so many times now since that has launched of people just being creative and using it for like, look, you can stick your markers in here. Look, you can, can put your brushes or your lip glosses or mascaras or whatever in here. Yeah. So that's really good. Sorry, um, hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. Just yeah. all this education has to for something, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you're totally right with, um, like contacting them in different ways as well too. Like yep. if you have their email, try the email. I actually read something a couple of weeks ago that people are more likely to respond to an email now than like a text or a phone call if they don't know who you are. And I was like, huh, that's interesting because I thought email was kind of like obsolete and nobody really checks emails anymore. But that was one of the statistics that they, that they said. So if you have their email, use their email. If you can Facebook message them, Facebook message them. And I usually add them as a friend on Facebook and message them. Like I don't just, just message them. I try to add them as a friend first in hopes that it doesn't go to their other folder. Um, because I don't want them to ever see it. But, and then if you have their, their phone number, text them or call them, like try to use all different avenues, um, to reach out. So, um, let's see what else the objection. Well, yeah, go ahead, Paula. No, I was going to say, I think the reason why maybe the email might work best is because, or better sometimes, is we are kind of in the habit of just kind of scrolling through our phones and we see things a lot. And, you know, you're not really focused and sitting down like you might be in front of your laptop or your, you know, desktop and your computer when you're looking at your email. You, it's kind of a time where you set aside and you've got more time. And so when you do see something come up that you have interest in, you might click on it and actually read through it and follow up with that versus just scrolling through something on your phone. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we that's do true. have our email on our phones, I know, but usually when you're in your email, it's a little bit more of an opportunity where you're taking a little more time to actually see what's in there versus just scrolling through and kind of just being kind of willy nilly with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be. And I'm sure you guys are like me. How many of you see a text message and you're like, oh, I'll respond to that. And then two days later, you never responded to that text message. And now it's all the way at the bottom of your thread and you just totally forgot about it. So I think that happens too. And, and I always try to think that when I'm doing bookings, like I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt of like, maybe they didn't get my text, you know, maybe they didn't get my call. Um, I know Leah and I've done this a little bit, but I know she does mostly um, like voice texting so if they have that option, I think it's iPhone to iPhone. Like if they have an iPhone and you go to text them, but it has the little um, microphone, you can leave them a message like, hey, this is live with Mary Kay. I know you have no idea who I am, but I pampered your friend Paula and she was so fun and so sweet and she wanted me to offer you a free session. So I was just reaching out to you um, to schedule that with you. Just text me back or call me back and we can get something scheduled for you. So she actually leaves it with a voice, which I think is, really smart because then they hear you, they hear your excitement about what you're offering. Um, and I think it just makes more of a connection. So if that option is available, when I go to text somebody, I will use that and I'll voice them, like leave them a voice on their text message versus just a, a text message. Um, and Amy said, that's how she does hers on Facebook messenger as well. So yeah, that's a good, good idea, Amy. Um, all right, the other thing real quick, we'll kind of close up with, and then if you guys have any more questions, let me know, but let's go over objections really quick. Because if you've been a Mary Kay for a hot minute, you probably already know that you are going to get rejections and that's okay. But I want you to kind of, I wanna teach you how to kind of overcome those objections. Um, so you're not just stuck and not know what to say when they do. So let's start with the time one because a lot of people are going to say, well, not a lot of people, but some people will say, oh, I just don't have time for that. Thank you. But I just don't have time. Um, what's your initial like, oh, okay. Thank you. Like what's your response to when they say they don't have time? Anybody? Okay. So typically when I was a new consultant, I would have been like, oh, okay. Yeah, I totally understand. Like, that's perfectly fine. Thank you. Bye. And I would have hung up, but we all know that we have enough time to make time for the things that we want to make time for. So we basically need to get her to know that this is something she needs to make time for. Um, so if they're just like super busy 
And that's one of their excuses. Like, Oh, I'm just super busy. Like, I just don't have time for that. Um, I'll say that's totally okay. Like if you want me to wait a week or two, I can give you a call back in a week or two, if that works for you. Um, or if she's just like, no, that's not going to work either. Like I have this and this and this, I'll be like, okay, well, how about this? Since you are so busy and I want to respect your, respect your time and your schedule. What if I just send you a sample pack in the mail? And then on a quick Saturday morning, you can jump on one of our Hydra sessions and you can just do it from your home on your own time, whenever's convenient for you. And then if you have any questions, I'm here to answer those about the products. So basically I'm not totally letting her go, but I'm going to send her that packet. And then after I send her that packet and she gets that packet, then I'll schedule a time to do either a one-on-one -on -one zoom with her real quick, or for her to just jump on like one of Leah's or one of my like Hydra sessions on a Saturday morning. Um, and really she doesn't have to watch it on Saturday morning. She can watch it anytime that's convenient for her. But I think with that is you have to have a follow-up plan in place when you schedule them to use it virtually. Does that make sense? So if you're gonna send her a virtual packet to do by herself, you don't wanna just send her the packet and then just be like, well, let me know when you use it because that's probably not gonna happen. So you wanna have like, okay, I'll, I'm gonna send you the packet. You'll probably get it on Monday. Um, how is like, if I follow up with you on Thursday to see if you have any questions about it or how to use it, how about I follow up with you on Thursday? Or, you know, whatever, just have that time that you're going to follow up with her. That way she knows like, okay, use, I have to use this before this date, or I have to do the session before this date. Um, so that's one of the things. And then let's see, what are the, what are some of the other objections you guys have heard with booking? Money issues or problems. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good one. Um, so that one I love because no other cosmetic company can you go into their store and get free product. And so if people say, oh, I just don't have the money or I'm not working right now, so I'm not going to be able to buy anything. I always say that is perfectly fine. Like, I do not want you to feel like you have to purchase anything. But if I told you, you could get your product for free, would it be something that you would be interested in doing? And so then you can tell her about being a hostess and your hostess program and how you can get, you know, hundred dollars for free or 50% off shopping spree or whatever your hostess program is. You can tell her about that. And then, um, share with her that in Mary Kay, we love to give free product away. And so this is what you'd have to do X, Y, Z. And then you could get that, that product for free. So you wouldn't even have to pay for it. So I would love to help you earn that. Um, because like you said, your, your money's tight right now. And, and I would love to see you be able to get that stuff for free. So I love when they say, well, not that I love that people don't have money, but I love when they give that objection because it's like, oh, perfect. Like this is perfect for you then because in Mary Kay, you can get it for free. So any other objections? I always like the... I used to use it or I've tried it in the past and it just made me break up. <laughs> okay. Yes. I've gotten that one a little bit before too. And what I always say is, can I ask when the last time you used it was? And most of the time it's like, oh, it was like 10 years ago. And so what I always tell them is, okay, well, you know what? I'll tell you what, since then, Mary Kay has changed a lot of our ingredients in our product. And we actually have a skincare line now that's all organic, all natural. So if you're up for it, I would love to still give you an updated facial makeover and let you try it and also let you compare it to the products that you're using now. Because what I find is most of the time, once I get in front of them and they put Mary Kay on their face again, they remember how it felt and they remember like, oh my gosh, I forgot how much I love this stuff. And then they come back and then they're a new customer. But people that tried it, if it's been like, even our skincare lines, if, if it's been five or more years our ingredients in our skincare line has changed within that. I mean, look at the Miracle Set 3D, like that has changed. And so if there was something that they couldn't use before, chances are if it's been over five years, like they can, they can try it again and, and be fine with it. So that's good. Anything else? And that, that did bring up a good point too, Kristen. I've had people say, um, oh, I don't use Mary Kay. I use another brand. Um, and with that, I always just say, oh, that's perfectly fine. But I would love to get your opinion on what you think about Mary Kay since you've never used it. Because I have people all the time that ask me how Mary Kay compares to, let's say she's using Sephora. I'll say, I'll have people ask me all the time how Mary Kay compares to Sephora. 
Sephora and I don't know because I don't use Sephora. So if it's okay with you, I would love just to pamper you, give you a facial makeover, let you try the product and then just give me your feedback, just how it compares to what you're using now. And I'll totally give you a free gift card just for helping me and giving me that information. So I also get that. I don't really wear makeup. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if they say that, then I ask, well, do you use like body care or um, skincare at all? Or do you like wash your body or wash your face at all? And so most of the time they'll say, well, yeah. Then I'll say, well, we'll just skip the makeup part. We'll just do skincare. And like literally I'll skip the makeup part. Won't even do makeup with them and just focus on skincare. But normally what happens in that case is once we do the skincare, then I'll ask them like, do you want to try any of the makeup? And then they always say, well, yeah, I guess I might as well since we're here. And then they end up trying it and liking it. And here they were not somebody that was going to use makeup. So yeah, that's always a good one too. So yeah, definitely ask them if they use skincare or body care. Any other ones? Yeah, go ahead. I can't see your name. It just says Moto. Yeah, my name is Phyllis. How are you, Blaine? Phyllis, okay. <laughs> so I had somebody tell me um, the other day that um, they had, they were trying to figure out what product they had tried that made their face look worse um, after they used it. And then she, she come back and told me that it was our value firm. And I was like, how long ago did you use it? She goes, it was just like a month ago. And I was really duped at what to say about that because I'm thinking, you must have used it wrong. But I, I, I don't want to um, also put that person down either. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, so... So it was, it was really your customer or wasn't that. your customer? Well, some, it was um, a f one of my customer's friends. You know, I was going okay. off referral from them. We're sitting okay. in the group and, you know. Okay. So. Um, so what I, what I would suggest to her is try to do a process of elimination. Like if she's using the whole repair line, start mm -hmm. with like one product. And I would start with either the day solution or the night solution. Take one of those out and use it for a week or two and see how her face does with that. And if it does, great, leave that product out. If it doesn't, then try to take out the night solution next. Typically, if people have an issue with the repair, it's either the retinol in the night cream or it's the, the SPF in the day cream. So- Right, but another thing that I was confused about is she actually didn't have, you know, the set. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, she had just tried it. And, and so I was just kind of like, hmm. It didn't make sense to me hmm. at all, but, you know, just finding another way to go about saying it, you know, cause it's like, um, you know, what I was told about the acne skincare is that, you know, you do have to use that in the right order, right fashion, proper form, or it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take care of the acne. Right. And, and I do have several customers that, that do use that and their, their skin looks amazing. Okay. You're, so, so you're saying she probably got a facial and tried the repair, but you were trying to book a facial with her. Exactly. Like, okay. So yeah, I would just say, well, exactly. let's just do a process of elimination and we'll try one product at a time. And if there's one that causes irritation or redness right away, we'll take it off and, and try a different skincare mm -hmm. line. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I would, I would kind of go that route or tell her like, let's try one that's more of um, like natural and and see if that's going to work for you right just go so. to the natural yeah especially I, if she's I, I got sensitive skin mm -hmm. i ordered that this time um to go into my inventory but maybe i'll just use it as a sample kit mm -hmm. or or you know because i i use the the value firm and and i and i love it okay. um i have sensitive skin i have eczema so you know i can always talk about that you know to people you know no problem oh i have sensitive skin if, if i'm allergic to everything yeah you know and this works for me good. um so good you know. all right that sounds good well any other booking questions guys before we hop off of here it's not a booking question where do i get my order forms where do i order them at on in touch um like the sales slips yes sales slips if you go to i believe it's business tools and under party uh -huh. supplies like it'll say skincare class okay. supplies i believe it's under there okay 
if you can't find it, just reach out to me or your director and we'll I'll send okay. you a video of how to find it. But I'm pretty sure it's under the uh, like bottom oh, row when you go there. to order. It's on that bottom row. Okay. So it's kind of a weird spot, but I mean, there's so many tabs on. I know. And in touch. I'm, there are worst case scenario, you can go yeah. up to the search and just search for um, sales receipts and it'll come up. Okay. So. All right, guys, All right. thanks for joining me today and jumping on and continue to, to jump on on Saturdays and Wednesdays for a new consultant training. We're just going to keep rotating, which I think is awesome because things that I may have shared, somebody else might not share and they might share something else when they do bookings next. And so it's so nice that you get all different kinds of avenues and personalities and things that work for people. Then you can take your ideas and, and make them your own. So, all right. I'm going to hop off. Have a good day, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.